Hey guys, you're watching a live webinar on zero day attacks. I'm Joel Benison, a product specialist from Manage Engine, and I'm going to be the presenter for today's session. So before we get into today's topic, which is indeed an interesting topic, I just want to thank you all for traveling all the way to the seventh webinar of the Halloween Cyber Street series. I hope we have made you aware of the different ways in which your network can be breached and also shared some valuable insights and best practices to stay secure against the looming threats. Now we are at the house seven of the cyber street, zero day attacks. There is one more, one more webinar left to wrap up this series. So stay tuned, a lot more interesting things are lined up for you. So today's topic is zero day attacks. And we have a great agenda for you today. Firstly, we will have a quick overview of zero day attacks. Followed by that, there will be a complete breakdown of the life cycle of a vulnerability Next up, we will be looking at the anatomy of a zero-day attack, and then we will discuss the zero-day Wednesday trend, which was quite popular during the early 2006. And then uh, we will run through the blue keep vulnerability, and I will explain why it is such a pressing matter. Finally, I'll walk you through various cyber hygiene practices to save yourself from zero-day threats and how you can achieve them with Vulnerability Manager Plus, which is a threat and vulnerability management solution offered by Manage Engine. What exactly is a zero day attack? Life is uncertain guys. So is your network security. While you might be focused on developing strategies for your business to bring in more money, hackers have only one job, finding a weakness in your security. Think about this. If your network is only safe as your weakest link, the risk would be twofold if there is no fix for the weakness. Yes, we are talking about zero days. If you Google the term zero days, uh, you might end up with a couple of slightly different uh, definitions. Some say that zero day attacks are the ones that take advantage of a security vulnerability on the same day it is made public. But most of the cybersecurity researchers would agree to this one particular definition of zero day attacks, which states that any attack that targets the previously unknown vulnerabilities, which is the unpublished vulnerabilities that are not yet disclosed by the respective vendor, who is also responsible for fixing the flaw which means the vulnerability could have been identified by a malicious attacker and kept as a secret until he develops an exploit and launches an attack so that the vendor wouldn't have time to fix the flaw first. But how exactly does this occur? In order to understand zero day attacks, we will need to uh, take a look at the life cycle of a vulnerability. So the life cycle of a normal vulnerability in includes the discovery of a vulnerability reporting the vulnerability to the relevant vendor, disclosure of the vulnerability and its CVID along with the security patches uh, released by the vendor. And then the user will have to apply the patch released by the vendor to fix the flaw. So now the first step involves the discovery of a vulnerability. There is literally no software that is completely secure from vulnerabilities. Software vulnerabilities may be uh, discovered either by the good guys includes uh, the internet security companies or the cyber security researchers or by the software vendors themselves. If a vulnerability is discovered by these guys, they usually report the, uh, report the flaw to the respective vendor and tend to keep the vulnerability data under wraps until the software vendor releases the flaw to, to, the, uh, to their customers. Sometimes the bad guys might be uh, the first one to discover the vulnerability. When this happens, they may either exploit it or sell the information on the black market. In such case, the vulnerability is known in advance and there is no way to guard against the attack. Now, this is known as zero day attack. We will discuss in detail about zero day attacks in the late, uh, I mean, in the anatomy section of zero day attacks. Now, let me quickly take you to a flow chart and point out the risky periods during the life cycle of a vulnerability. As I told you earlier, the good guys, once they discover the vulnerability, informs the vendor about the issue and withholds all details of zero-day vulnerabilities for a reasonable period. Once the vendor becomes aware of this flaw, he quickly works to release a security patch. And during this period, the vulnerability details are kept unpublished. Since that data would make attackers aware of the vulnerability and accelerate their process in developing an exploit. This period is also called as the window of vulnerability. That is the time between the discovery of a vulnerability and when a, uh, when a fix is released by the vendor. 
So during this period, the end user also remains unaware of the risk. Once the patch becomes available, the public is aware of the vulnerability. So is the hackers. So this becomes the most vulnerable period. Therefore, it's in the user's hands to patch the flaw as quickly as possible. And also, you need to keep your antivirus up to date with the latest signatures to fight any zero day exploits. So I also need you to be aware of Google Project Zero. This includes a team of security researchers who constantly discovers and validates vulnerabilities and quietly reports the bug to the vendor. And they also give the company 90 days to fix the problem. If the vendor doesn't fix the flaw within the next 90 days, the finder might disclose the vulnerability to warn users about the problem. This time limit is to urge the users, uh, I mean vendors, to fix the flaw before an attacker finds it and exploits it. But for vulnerabilities that are considered to be critical, Project Zero allows only seven days for the vendor to pass the flaw. If the vulnerability is being found actively exploited, Project Zero reduces the response time, response time to less than seven days. In such cases, either the vendor or the security researcher might ask the user to disable the feature that's vulnerable or follow other mitigation controls until a patch is rolled out. Very few cases and also rare case, the vulnerability might be discovered by the user of a software. And once the user discovers the software, uh, I mean the flaw in the software, uh, it might uh, it might wind up on a blog or otherwise be publicly disclosed in a community. In the final case, the race is between the good guys as well as the bad guys. Even if the potential hackers hear about the vulnerability, it might take some time for them to exploit it. Meanwhile. The vendor will be uh, vendor will hopefully release a patch first, but how daunting it would feel to wait in fear until the vendor rolls out a patch. Now, by due to some unfortunate events, what if the hackers get to discover the vulnerability first? Which then takes us to the next step: anatomy of a zero-day attack. Now, imagine if the hacker gets his hand on an uncharted vulnerability, like a legitimate computer security researcher. He uses multiple automated testing tools to persistently prop into applications and operating systems. And he also leverages reverse engineering techniques to find a weakness, a backdoor, so to speak. Now he has the chance to either report this vulnerability or not. But unlike a legitimate security professional, he does not report the vulnerability to the software vendor. Once the vulnerability is found, he can exploit it on his own for personal gains or worse, he could sell it to the black market broker. These brokers are the middlemen collecting and compiling a list of unpublished vulnerability data and th their exploits. And they keep these information hidden from the public as well as the vendor. From these black, black market vendors, highly sophisticated attackers purchase the exploits that are suitable to breach their target. They then incorporate this exploit in a cyber attack to carry out his malicious actions. Think of this as a missile. I mean, the exploit as a missile. So the expo exploit acts as a delivery system for the payload. The exploits leverages the unpublished vulnerability to breach the network and delivers the payload. And the payload uh, can either be a Trojan or a coin miner or other malicious codes that actually does the damage. This is how a zero day attack is launched. There is also a cunning strategy that attackers employed uh, to target Microsoft applications as well as operating systems. If you are a Windows user, you must be aware of the monthly patch release schedule, also called as Patch Tuesday, which falls on the second Tuesday of every month. On this day, Microsoft usually drops its security updates for all its products. Cyber criminals have found a way to take advantage of this by timing the new zero day attacks right after Patch Tuesday. That is, right after Microsoft publishes its latest patches. This brings in an element of surprise. Since a new attack is carried out on unpublished vulnerabilities, when everyone is busy with patching the disclosed vulnerabilities. This provides the attackers a gap to carry out his evil plan with, without any obstacle when the vendor is working up a patch. By the time Microsoft releases a, a patch for this flaw, the damage would have been already done. Unless the vulnerabilities in question are extremely dangerous, 
Microsoft will refrain from issuing a patch until the next patch Tuesday. Security experts have coined the term Zero Day Wednesday to describe the strategy. And attackers widely latched onto this trend in 2006. Next up, we have an interesting topic. Yes, we are going to talk about the Blue Keep vulnerability, which is also called as the next WannaCry. In this year's May Patch Tuesday, Microsoft urged its users to patch a highly critical RDP flaw, which is now what we call as Blue Keep. So Blue Keep is basically a flaw in a remote desktop component that affects almost all versions of Windows. This vulnerability is tracked as CVE 20190708. And this vulnerability is a vulnerable vulnerability because it can be weaponized by a potential malware to propagate itself from one vulnerable computer to another automatically without any victim's interaction. This vulnerability is so critical that Microsoft even issued patches for Windows XP as well as Windows 2007, which they stopped supporting long back. Microsoft also warns its users that Bluekeep can create a large scale outbreak due to its ability to replicate and propagate similar to 2017's WannaCry. And it also fears that uh, Bluekeep can be used to deliver payloads more impactful and damaging than WannaCry. Almost 1 million systems were found vulnerable even after a month after the patches are released. Because of that, many security firms, as well as cybersecurity researchers, who successfully de uh, developed a fully working exploit for Bluekeep, refrain from releasing their exploits out in the public. With the recent spike in Bluekeep exploit attempts, it seems like Microsoft nightmare would rather come true. The Bluekeep exploitation in the wild was first speculated by Kevin Beaumont on Saturday when his multiple eternal pod RDP honeypot systems got crashed and rebooted suddenly. The honeypot is basically a network attack system set up as a decoy to lure cyber attacks, uh, I mean cyber hackers, and to, and to detect, deflect, and steady their hacking attempts, uh, which they usually use to gain unauthorized access to information systems. So after the crash, Marcus Hutchkins, the researcher who helped to stop WannaCry, uh, WannaCry outbreak, analyzed the crash dumps shared by Biomant and confirmed this. Do keep artifacts in memory and shellcode to drop a Monero miner. So basically, the exploit contained encoded PowerShell commands as the initial payload, after which it eventually downloads the final malicious executable binary from a remote attacker control server and executes it on a target system. However, Hutchkins also confirmed that the malware spread by this blue key vulnerability does not contain any self-spreading capabilities, which means without a vulnerable component, the attackers would be able to only compromise a vulnerable system that's directly connected to the internet, but they have no way of accessing the internally connected systems, which is the LAN systems. It appears that the unknown attackers are just scanning the internet to find vulnerable systems and then exploiting them. Here, uh, I have a list of operating systems which are affected by the blue keep flaw. We highly recommend you to patch CVE 20190708 across all these operating systems to stay secure against blue key. And uh, fixing the vulnerability is not possible anytime sooner. At least ensure the following mitigation controls are in place to secure your network. Please note that these RDP uh, services must be disabled if they are not used for any of your business critical operations. Also ensure uh, port number 3389 is blocked using a firewall or make it accessible only over a private VPN. And please enable network level authentication. You have to note that this is only a partial, partial mitigation to prevent any unauthorized, uh, unauthenticated attacker from exploiting this vulnerable flaw. I have to tell you this, guys. There is not a single silver bullet solution for zero-day vulnerabilities. But you can reduce the likelihood of falling victim to a zero-day attack by ensuring certain cyber hygiene practices. Fortunately, Manage Engine's Vulnerability Manager Plus, an integrated threat and vulnerability management solution, offers an array of features that help you to stay secure against zero-day threats. Here I have a list of cyber hygiene practices you can implement today with Vulnerability Manager Plus for a, for a better tomorrow. 
So let me brief you on how these practices can help you reinforce your cyber resilience. Usually, uh, Manage Engine has a team of security experts who keeps tab on various communities and forums and also religiously monitors the vendor advisories for any new update on vulnerabilities. Once a zero-day vulnerability is made public, whether by the vendor or through any other means, it is evaluated and updated in the Manage Engine vulnerability management database. From then, the vulnerability manager plus synchronizes with a vulnerability database and starts detecting those vulnerabilities in your network. So by this way, uh, I mean, vulnerability manager plus provides an isolated view of zero-day vulnerabilities. This helps you to gain awareness of the zero-day vulnerabilities uh, and prevent and ensures that zero-day vulnerabilities doesn't get buried among the other vulnerabilities. So when the patch becomes available for the zero-day vulnerability, it allows you to deploy the patch straight from the console. And if the patch is not available, uh, Vulnerability Manager Plus can help you, help you enforce mitigation measures in the event of no patch. This will help you to reduce the likelihood of zero-day exploits. And uh, it is necessary to keep your OS and applications up to date with the latest patches. Uh, although keeping all the systems up to date with the latest patches will not stop a zero-day attack, this might make it more difficult for an attacker to succeed. Fortunately, Vulnerability Manager Plus offers complete automation of patching for Windows, Mac, Linux, as well as 350 plus third-party applications. And it is recommended to follow principle of least privilege. This would restrict you to run all the software on your system as a non-privileged user. This helps you to diminish all the effects of a successful attack exploiting any zero-day vulnerability. And uh, it is also uh, very essential to block all the vulnerable ports and disable legacy protocols. Uh, if you see the WannaCry ransomware attack, which wreaked havoc in thousands of organizations, uh, it could have easily been prevented if SMB V1 had been disabled and the firewall rule was set to block port 445. As long as your uh, antivirus protection is up to date, you should get protection within a few hours or days of a new zero day threat. Fortunately, Vulnerability Manager Plus allows you to detect, uh, identify missions in which antivirus is not installed or not enabled or not up to date. Furthermore, you can deploy antivirus definition updates to your antivirus software from the console itself. Forget about zero days. Think of the softwares that has already reached end of life. This software uh, will not receive security updates from the vendor and will remain vulnerable forever. And our product will help you track these applications that are about to become end of life and also those operating systems as well as application that have already reached the end of life. As you can see, lack of awareness and inability to enforce security measures leave most of the organizations victim to a zero-day attack. We cannot say for certain that these measures will prevent you from all zero-day attacks, but having vulnerability manager plus in your network might save or might improve your stance against zero-day threats. If you wish to avail a personalized demo of Vulnerability Manager Plus, please write to our technical support at vulnerabilitymanagerplus-support at manageengine.com. You can ask our expert panel member to send you the support email ID via chat. And here I have an important announcement for you guys. As most of you are aware, Windows 7 is reaching its end of life on January 14, 2020. But Microsoft announced that it would continue supporting Windows 7 through extended security updates, but only at a paid subscription. We at uh, Manage Engine, through our Vulnerability Manager Plus, uh, offers free, offer free support for deploying these ESUs, which is extended security updates, after you purchase them from Microsoft. To receive more update on Windows 7 ESU, uh, I mean, support for Windows 7 ESU in our product, click the link below and subscribe. Or you can ask our expert panel member for the link. He will be very much pleased to help you. I hope you really enjoy the session and thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen till the end. Coming up, we have our final webinar on coming Thursday which is the finale, uh, which will give you a summary of all the cyber attacks we have covered so far. With this, I'm wrapping up the cybersecurity uh, series for today. And we have one more webinar left, which is on Thursday, November 14th. Please stay tuned and follow with the next webinar. 
your opinion means a lot to us. If you find this webinar interesting or if you have any other suggestions, please fill up the survey form and give us your feedback. Thank you so much for attending this webinar, guys.